for generations. This is how most of us have viewed our seafood industry. Shrimpers and trawlers fishing the majestic waters off our South Carolina coastline. But increasingly, these images are changing from fishing to farming. Over the years, you have met hundreds of farmers. And one thing you learn quicker than any other is that they all share a hardwired trait geared towards constant innovation. These things are, are baby manufacturers. <laughs> they breed every 28 days. Rick Eager is fond of his tilapia, a species relatively unknown to most of us a few years ago. It's now a prime source of revenue. Years ago, Eager founded Swimming Rock Fish Farm on this pristine piece of property. It sits on an undisturbed portion of low country land 25 miles from Charleston. Kevin Hutchinson oversees operations here at Rockfish. One of his best business ideas was raising these striped bass. Seafood chefs absolutely love this fish. So Kevin began to sell them whole and live directly to restaurants all over the low country. See how healthy that fish is. That is a hybrid striped bass. You see the, the break in the lines, how heavy they are. Body confirmation is pretty. Besides those feel good reasons of keeping South Carolina seafood close to home, this is also big business. Americans consume more than 16 pounds of seafood per person every year. But 84% of that food is imported from countries overseas. American farmers like the guys here at Rockfish are in direct competition with farmers from East Asia, Central and South America who cultivate similar species on a massive scale. As it stands today, American fish farmers are meeting just 7% of the demand for domestic seafood. One government group who tracks the seafood industry says the trend towards added imports should be addressed. The head of NOAA's Fishery Service says the U.S. needs more sustainable domestic aquaculture to help meet consumer demand for healthy seafood and to narrow the widening foreign trade gap with our rivals. I think the uh, quality of water is the number one concern. If you buy, buy shrimp or fish overseas, uh, they're trying to do such mass production that they don't understand the quality of water that these fish are being grown in. And I don't think that they're um, uh, being governed uh, and uh, looked at the way that we are here in the U.S. We're not allowed to use antibiotics in our, our production, no chemicals whatsoever, everything is natural. We have to make sure the environment in which we're growing our, our seafood or, and our fish for stocking programs are kept in the best conditions possible for them. It's important that they remain healthy and so we have to make sure water quality is, is good for them and we take care of them. 60 miles away in Bluffton, Al Stokes manages the Waddell Mariculture Center. Staff scientists here are viewed as some of the world's most foremost experts on aquaculture and seafood sustainability. Research here on issues like those antibiotics we just mentioned and more broadly tracking the ever-changing ecosystem has provided multitudes of inshore and offshore fish farmers who rely on Waddell for advice and guidance about their farming business. So there's a considerable demand for seafood now. Uh, aquaculture produces about 50% of the seafoods consumed in the world now, and it's gonna grow. The ocean production's been flat for a number of years, been yielding no increase, and so aquaculture is going to have to, to take over that demand or fill that demand for product. And here's where you realize aquaculture isn't, can't be, some passing fad. Waddell is closely involved with monitoring our ocean's fisheries. And the fact is, we simply consume and demand more seafood than our natural resources can provide. If you want to continue eating seafood at the rate that we're eating now, yes, because the popu human population is increasing. Um, the per capita consumption of, of uh, fish in the United States has gone up slightly, but it's up to about a little under 60, a little over 16 pounds per, per person per year. Um, if you count 300 million people, that's a lot of pounds of food. Before we go, we're leaving you with a sneak peek at the latest installment in our award-winning documentary series, Carolina Stories. ETV producer Mark Adams followed the offshore lives of two South Carolina shrimpers who wonder 
Will their way of life last deep into this 21st century? The film is called Carolina Caught, and it's produced and broadcast in high definition. Trust me, you won't want to miss this look at an industry which has played such a crucial role in the history of our South Carolina coast. That's it for this week. For all of us here at ETV, thanks for watching The Big Picture. I think if um, the shrimping industry dies completely out, you're going to lose a heritage. I just think it's something worth preserving. And, uh, you know, we, we're trying to sell a good product and something that's good for you. It's always been here.